Hey everybody, Chris Farad here. Welcome to a game called Ironclad Tactics. I'm taking a look at this with you guys because I think it deserves some serious attention. Uh, I've played this for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes maybe, and on the surface, it's like, you kind of look at it and it's a combination at a very basic level of Plants vs. Zombies and like Magic the Gathering. It's really quite odd, but it's really quite fun as well. It's got a very nice uh, steampunk aesthetic. There's uh, the story aspect is very well done and it's told in the form of uh, these comic book style storyboards. Really fun. So I want to show you this, but I do want to be mindful that I'm not spoiling any of the story for you because it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's a recreation of the Civil War using uh, automatons, not robots. Okay, it's very important. And uh, I don't want to tell you much more than that about the story, but I do want to show you some of the gameplay and explain how it works. Uh, it can be a little intimidating, so hopefully I can uh, do this in a way that breaks it down nicely for you. Uh, so first things first, uh, you start on this kind of story path, and the way that they train you is really interesting, and the fact that you don't just go right on to war. <laughs> it shows you how to navigate the map uh, using... A restaurant and you're a server and you're kind of navigating through uh, bringing food to tables which was really interesting a really nice uh, touch for tutorial sections in games that are typically quite boring uh, I actually really enjoyed it and uh, when you're playing these earlier sections you just use a basic tutorial deck that they've built for you you go through and you unlock these cards as you progress so you can see here's all the cards that we unlocked uh, on that section and so on and so forth now that we're here uh, we are able to build custom decks, and that's what I've done. So, once you're in here, I know it's quite intimidating, uh, but over here, if you eliminate this, it's all a filter, okay? So you just filter out different factions. As you can see right now, we only have the kind of Confederate faction available, and then uh, whatever this faction stands for, Zebulon's Cat. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but you can have a maximum of two factions per deck which does require you to plan a little bit. Very cool. Now, on my most recent map, I unlocked this revolver in the trumpet, which is cool. And uh, I've only unlocked two of these. So you can see I can only use it a maximum of two times. If I click it more, nothing happens. This one I can only use once, right? Uh, the thing is, is that you can only use 20 cards in a deck. So you have to be smart about how you use them. And probably the most important things to have in are things like your light chassis here because it does, it actually is a unit that can fight. And it's got these victory points associated with it. And that's really how you win each of the sections is you have to get a certain amount of your characters or your units to the end of the field to count as victory points. And these guys count as two. The only other, um, the only other unit that has victory points is this prototype ironclad. So I'm gonna grab two of those as well because one victory point can mean the difference between winning and losing. Uh, but that's, that means, as you can see, we're over by two cards, and I'm going to get rid of something. So what I'm going to get rid of is maybe one of my maneuver cards, which sounds crazy because you definitely need to maneuver, but I think I'm going to be okay with three, I hope. And then I can also get rid of, let's see, let's get rid of the... Let's get rid of the Carbine Musket. And we do have uh, three available. The thing that's interesting is only the Light Chassis can attack, but it can only attack after you equip it with some type of uh, weapon. So if I don't have four weapons and I have four Light Chassis, that means one's going to be unequipped. And that means that it's hopefully uh, just going to make it through straight to the end. What I am going to do is I'm going to get rid of one of these Prototype Ironclads, and I'm going to bring in... Uh, my other carbine musket because these guys are only worth one. They're worth less health. They're easy to, to put out there, but you can't equip them and it just they're not as efficient. Uh, they're mostly used as cannon fodder. We also have infantry units which get run over by the automatons, which obviously has its disadvantages, but um, they can do certain things that other things can't. So they can um, they can like Click switches on different flags that you need to get to that will earn you action points. Uh, they are valuable in some of the challenges, things like that. Uh, I'm not going to pick any of the new stuff that I just got because I uh, don't know how to use it. 
the good thing is, like, you can see this has a spread, basically, on its range, and uh, I like how they've indicated it. It's very easy to understand. Very cool. Anyways, you can spend a ton of time in the deck area, but uh, don't overlook this, because this is a very deep part of this game. What we're going to do is head into Charleston Harbor, and uh, we'll see what's available. So, we can, if you win the store, we're going to get four cards. We don't know what they are yet, though. Uh, it looks like parts, so probably upgrades to the chassis. Uh, this is all parts, actually, that you're going to earn from here. Uh, the story challenge is to gain eight victory points using mortars. Interesting. So that's probably something that we'd have to visit again, because we don't have any mortars right now. And another story challenge is don't attack with ironclad weapons. Yeah, that's going to be really difficult. So unlocking all these cards is going to require multiple playthroughs of the maps, and they will always play out differently. Um, you're going to have to adjust your deck to be successful. I just want to show you the gameplay and try to explain it in a way that's going to make a little bit of sense. Here's the storyboard I was talking about. These guys are riding a train. Uh, basic premise of the story is that um, somebody's just attacked our nation, and we have been working on these automatons, and we are deploying them as part of that. Uh-oh. Okay, so, maybe... Now, here's how we use the, the mortars. That's really cool. I didn't know this. Use infantry to hold those mortars and gain victory points. Here they come to the mortars. So, only infantry can use these mortars. They're obviously going to be quite powerful. And I don't know... It said you can earn victory points using them, so we'll see how that works. Uh, right off the bat, I don't have anything that I can deploy. Now I can because you earn a certain amount of action points every turn. I'm going to put mine right up against his, and then I'm going to drop a couple of these guys into the field and just see what we can do. This guy's just a scout, so he can't hurt me. This guy can't hurt me. We're basically going to come to a standstill, but I'm going to equip a weapon, and he did as well. There's also field repair, which is going to come in handy here because hopefully I can repair him and uh, keep him alive while this one dies. Unless they bring another uh, rifleman behind or something, but this guy is just a scout. He can't do anything. They're trying to get him into the um, mortar area, obviously. I'm going to bring Yahoo. my rifleman behind. Much obliged. He's going to be able to do some damage. And see, they brought a rifleman too. And this guy actually looks like he's dishing out the heavy damage. Oh. So he got that before I could repair it. Now, this guy's toast unless they use a maneuver card. So as you can see, that's where that comes in pretty handy. This guy might make it right to the end, which is great. I'm going to drop another one in here. I'll drop another one here. Now he can these guys can run over the infantry, which is great. So let's drop a rifleman down here, get him into the mortar I'm slots. Ready. The problem is now uh, that we have to deal with this guy. Because they've got infantry in there, that's gonna hurt us. So I'm actually gonna bring this guy up and hopefully run him over. Here's another light chassis. As you can see, they've gotten four victory points through already, so we're in a little bit I'll of trouble. Watch. Go with the rifled musket here. Now this guy's gonna die because, well, obvious reasons. I have this guy holding because I'd like to move him off to kill. But it looks like every time they shoot with this, that is a, uh, a victory point. And we're gonna be in trouble. I can't deal with him very soon. Okay, so now we've got somebody in there. Uh, let's equip something up there. We can repair him soon as well. I could deploy a scout, but there's not really any purpose for me in doing that right now. Every time we shoot this, we're getting a victory point. So this guy, like, he needs to die, and he needs to die now. Come on. There we go. Now we're going to throw a scout in behind. I'm going to let him go right to the end. Unless they decide to try and block me. This guy's going to be in trouble, though. He just got a weapon. Yeah, let's throw my scout in here to try and get that next mortar. I reckon. Okay. Got it. 
You know, we're gonna be in trouble if they get any infantry in there. Much obliged. Uh oh, they're lining it up too. They want it. Huh? But look, we're gonna be- Oh, this is gonna be so close. He needs to get to the end. He needs to get to the mortar. We're in the mortar now. We're gonna pause there. I think we're gonna be in a pretty good spot. Shoot the mortar. Oh, it's so close! We got it. <laughs> Sick. Okay. That is the basic breakdown. Uh, sometimes the, the matches last quite a bit longer. Sometimes they're a little bit shorter. Uh, I'll show you guys one more because uh, it's really fun and I want to show you how the cards unlocked and the different things that we can see. I'm going through the story rather quick. If I was to do a full playthrough of this, I would spend a lot of time on the story, but uh, I think you're, you're, you're playing this game mostly for the gameplay. I gotta say though, the story is kind of interesting and it starts you off where these guys, these two right here are uh, friends from a very young age. This one's kind of the overachiever and he's always first place, but now as things have been happening, this guy is kind of starting to take more of a leadership role and he's involved with some of these automatons, things like that. And so it's it's actually pretty well done, and it's definitely not just overlooked and thrown in there. I'm just gonna go through it quick because if you don't wanna have anything spoiled, then you don't have to. And this uh, Zebulon is a guy that, or Zebulon, he's uh, a guy that we are uh, working for. So. Now it's going to show all the things that we unlocked. Uh, allows the equipped ironclad to capture flags like an infantry unit. That's actually really beneficial. It means that pretty much anything, and I don't know if it's limited to just flags. It sounds like it is, uh, but there are situations where you get a you get a flag bunker and you earn more action points quicker. And then we've got this guy, a cavalry saber. It hits everything and it does damage basically in a small tight circle around you. That's interesting. Really interesting. And so to revisit the challenges, uh, we'd have to gain all eight of our victory points using the mortars, which would not be easy. Uh, it could be done, but you'd have to spend time doing it. Um, so really interesting that you can go back here and there's lots of replay value because you can see in the last three sections, there's a ton of cards I haven't unlocked and they're all different. It may even, you may even be forced to go back at one point because you don't have the certain things necessary uh, to unlock or to build your deck the way you want. So if I were to go in here and take a look, uh, I think the way that we have the deck so far is pretty good. Uh, having only 20 cards, it's, it is a real, it's a real challenge. It is not easy. And uh, I think it's, it's really quite tough. I'm, I'm gonna get rid of the scout because I don't see a ton of value with him. I'd rather have somebody that can attack, even if it's only one action point more. Um, for right now, that's what I'd rather have. Uh, you now see we have these veteran riflemen, and that's because we attack 30 enemies with our riflemen, and then now when we attack 40 enemies with our veteran riflemen, we'll get another upgrade, which is really cool, but comes at an increased cost. And these guys now are costing the same amount as a light chassis, so gotta be really careful with that. What I think is going to happen is we'll probably get to one of those bigger chassis after we score more victory points with these ones. So there's a lot of in-depth strategy here, and it is a lot more than what I thought at first glance. So tell you what, let's go in with what we have here. I'm going to actually remove a field repair. I, did, I feel I didn't use it that much this time. And I'm going to bring out a, a veteran rifleman because they deal out a lot of damage, and they're a little bit tankier. They... I shouldn't say they deal up more damage, but they deal from further range. So, pretty cool. And, uh... This is two damage, whereas our carbines... Where are we here? The carbine musket only does one. The rifled musket only does one. Hmm, tough one. You know what? Let's get rid of one of the rifled musket. Actually, no. We're gonna keep that. We're gonna get rid of one of these. Even though it's a lower action point, it's not that much different. And this one's already been upgraded. So we'll throw this into the Cavalry Saber and uh, we'll see how that does. The nice thing is too, you can duplicate, you can make separate decks, you can have different strategies, like really, really cool. 
So let's go into the next one and see how it goes. There could be hundreds of ironclads in there. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. I hope that... Oh, yeah. Look at that. Destroy the warehouse sentry. Oh, and he's gonna... Oh, what? Okay, I'm just gonna cannon fodder that one. Oh, okay. I see what's up. I may maneuver this one out of the way. These little things are repairing him. That's interesting. Let's bring in a rifle. Right right. Like, look at the range. Now, he can shoot this rocket. Oh, wow. Maybe he can't shoot the rocket. Yeah, he can. There we go. So, if we destroy the rocket, it's not going to hurt us as much. That actually came in pretty handy there. But what we need to do is now, it's not about getting to the end and just getting victory points. It's about destroying this thing. I'm going to keep this guy paused. He's going to kind of be my fodder. But if we get him in there to deal a little bit more damage, that'd be nice. What's going on? Let's bring him up now to guard the, uh, the rifleman. Come on. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a field repair on this one. He's probably gonna get hit here. No, maybe not. Let's, I'm gonna hunker this guy down, as I would call it, and we'll see. I'm gonna save up for this rifled musket instead of the carbine. Because really, at the end of the day, this is what we need to destroy. And he's not making it very easy for me. If I'm being honest. Okay, there. Now he can get some shots off. A few pot shots here and there. Oh, no! <laughs> so there I should have stopped him, actually. This is a whole new level of thinking. Uh, let's actually bring up my light chassis again. Bring a prototype out down below. And then we can... Start bringing in some infantry behind these prototypes. That's my game plan, anyways. Damn it. So now I'm keeping him here because I don't want... I don't want this thing being able to hit me. We're going to actually dodge it. He's going to get two victory points from it, but I'm okay with it. I can't sacrifice another one of these right now. Okay, we're gonna repair. We're gonna throw out another prototype. And I'll bring out a, uh, an infantry down Much below. Obliged. There we go. So now this is great too, because it's dealing damage to his repair things in the back. We're going to bring another chassis in. Uh, let's go down. Actually, let's go here. Uh, that might not be the best idea, actually, now that I think about it. I may have to maneuver him out of the way. Depends on where he throws his rocket. Okay, so this guy's going to take this one out now. Let's see what happens here. Okay. I'm going to let him get that rocket through again. There we go. Actually, you know what? We 
are going to sacrifice a prototype right here. Oh, we didn't get it out in time. More strategy. Here, we'll sacrifice a prototype here. And we're just going to have him take the full brunt of it. Oh, I missed it. Okay, so now I want to repair. Keep dealing the damage as we can. I could really use a, a medic here. Looks like he's going to go down. Oh, maybe not. Keeping these guys here because eventually he's going to have to come down. Although he can't get repaired, he has to move. And this one, I'm going to go in for the kill. There we go. What's going on? I'm going to move the, maneuver this one up, and we're going to try to get rid of this one behind him. Let's get this guy in closer. Ooh, that's new. Don't like that. Keep taking him down. Little by little. Everything counts. Oh, don't move any closer. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. This guy's in trouble. Yep. Oh, I shouldn't have moved him. He's just going to get flamed. Okay, he needs one more hit. We're in a great spot here. We can get in a little bit closer. That would be great. Uh, he's toast. Here, we'll throw in some fodder in front. I think we're going to do this here. It's close. See, that was actually very good placement how that worked out. But if he comes up here, he's, he's dead now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use chassis followed by riflemen in the same manner that we've been doing. I'm ready. And you can see, if you if you don't spend your turns up front, your uh, action points build up quite heavily. Oh, I want to pause him. He's going to go, and he's probably going to die, but this guy might die too. No, nope, no, nope, we should be okay, because it's going to explode like this. There we go. Well, he... I guess maybe he just won't come up there. Well, let's see. I'm going to repair this one, even. Get going. Much obliged. Man, he deals up the damage. Ooh. I'm bringing him down. Shoot! No! Oh. It's tense because they just it doesn't stop. Oh, you're joking. And he doesn't have any weapons. Oh, there we go. We need one shot. Do it. Beautiful. That's insane. I like that. It's quite a bit different from the, uh, the way that we've had to play up until that point. So, really cool. Really challenging. A whole warehouse and only one ironclad. Like a guard dog. Anyways really cool stuff guys i'm having a ton of fun with this i'm gonna spend some time in here these are new cards that we just unlocked um the replay value is huge
just trying to get the new cards. He's made it very apparent, and by he I mean Zach of Zachtronics, he made it very apparent that uh, there are no microtransactions, you cannot buy cards. You have to uh, earn them through playing the game, and I am going to play and earn cards like there's no tomorrow. This is a super time. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Go check out Ironclad Tactics. It's in the link below, and it is out today on Steam. See you around. Bye. Check out that musket.